uh, good afternoon everyone welcome to the 10th edition of the uh, wfm media webinar um so uh, as amit mentioned this is uh, uh, this was started on 7th april uh, we finished uh, nine webinars and this is the 10th webinar in almost a month uh, we've covered different topics with different experts uh, we believe uh, all the topics we selected were topical for the moment uh, so uh, today's topic is more different unit expert and wall uh, i think with uh, uh, this uh, covid-19 outbreak uh, and social distancing here to stay for some time uh, prefabrication is going to be the norm for some time uh, it's not that unit expert and wall is something new it's always been there but uh, uh, you will find uh, more uh, trajectory of unit expert and wall only because of uh, uh, what you are able to do in the factory. It's a completely pre uh, factory made product, so uh, this will gain more traction as we progress. Um, just uh, to give you a quick introduction of today's session, uh, we have the introduction done already, and now we will have a presentation by Shiju Baskaran, followed by Anthony John, then a joint Q&A for both the speakers, and then we end the webinar. Uh, any questions you have, you could um, post the questions on the questions pane, which is at the uh, GoToWebinar uh, panel. So these are questions which are not oral, but you will need to type the questions, and I'll then pick the questions at the end of both the presenters' presentations and shoot it uh, mm -hmm. at them. Uh, uh, to just give an overview of what's being discussed today, again, the topic is on uh, unitized curtain wall. Uh, Shiju Baskaran will be giving an over overview from a project management uh, perspective, pre-construction checks, the installation process, design to execution with a case study. Uh, Anthony John from Shuko India will be talking on unitized curtain wall systems, structural aspects, fabrication, assembly, transportation, logistics, and factory testing of unitized uh, curtain walls. Uh, both our uh, presenters today are um, well-experienced uh, gentlemen in their respective field. Uh, Shiju is from a project management uh, uh, perspective and background. Uh, he's from Turn Project Management India. Uh, he has uh, a great experience in uh, project management of various projects in India and the Middle East uh, and in Central Asia too. Uh, he's going to be our first presenter, followed by Antony John. Antony John is a director of technical and systems at Chuko India. He has over 26 years of experience uh, in this domain, highly knowledgeable in this field. Uh, so um, we will start off with our first presenter for the day. I will hand over control to Shiju, who will be uh, making his presentation on uh, unitized curtain wall uh, from a project management uh, perspective. Uh, over to you, Shiju. Uh, uh, John and myself will switch off our cameras now. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Bye. Okay. A very good afternoon to all of you. Thank you, WFM, for inviting me for this uh, wonderful platform where we can share our experiences. I hope everyone knows about Turner. Uh, we are one of the leading project management firms uh, outside the US and uh, one of the biggest construction companies in the States. Uh, construction of world famous uh, buildings like Burj Khalifa, Taipei 101 were managed by Turner. Today, I'm going to talk about unitized panels. Um, as a project management company, we deal with overall aspects of the project, and facade is one element on that. So my session will be more like you know, PMC perspective or a developer perspective. Uh, consider my session as a starter. The main course will be served by Mr. Anthony. He's a system specialist. So safety comes first. Now, after the lockdown, you know, some of the sites already started. So make sure we take care of all the safety precautions needed as prescribed by the, you know, authorities. During this session, uh, we'll I'll generally talk about the facade and uh, the building design criteria. What are the uh, major elements you need to decide uh, consider during the design and some pre-construction consideration as a again as a pmc perspective fabrication and installation i'll be i won't be talking much about fabrication uh, that is uh, you know all these mainly pre 
these uh, unitized panels are fabricated in the factory. So I'll spend more time on installation and I'll take one of the project which we did in, uh, Turner did in uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, I like that project a lot. I was part of that project for four years. So that is not just a glass block. So uh, it's it's my you know favorite project. So I'll be I'll be using that project to explain all different systems. Well, finally closing out in a PM C perspective will be discussed. So now unitized curtain wall. It is one of the first choice for many of the architects and system manufacturers. Uh, it has got various advantages. One is you know it is very easy. Uh, the ease of penetration, that is a major thing. And improved quality, we can expect because it's mainly fabricated in a factory environment. Um, modern high-rise building, uh, building design is generally driven by facade designers. Previously, in a song, so when you compose a song, uh, these uh, lyrics were written first, then, then followed by the music. But nowadays things are changed. First the music will be composed, then the lyrics will be written to that. Similar to that, in modern high-rise building design also, now the concept design will be finalized with the form of the building. So the facade is one of the you know first primary factor. Then uh, other, other elements like interior design will be followed. So designers can be, you know, the designs can be uh, regular geometric shapes or it can be some complex forms inspired from nature like plants, flowers, living or living things or, or, or even something like seashells. So in order to comprehend how the concept of facade design is conceived in the minds of the designers, uh, let us look into a few iconic projects uh, which is managed by Turner. I hope you can recognize uh, this building, the tallest tower in the world. The top view of this uh, tower is evolved from a desert lily, it's a flower. So a very stable design uh, with the smooth corner facade. Another wonderful imagination. This building is located uh, in Vietnam. I visited this building uh, two years back. They have, you know, you can see, um, they have, you know, used, uh, the design evolution is, uh, they, there is, they have displayed one, uh, the design evolution in their um, viewers gallery, you know, one of the top floor. So what they have written there, this photo is shown over there. Uh, so in that, you can see the lotus flower. Lotus flower in Vietnam, it is considered sacred like in, in India. So what uh, they did, the designer, uh, they have folded one of the, you know, petal of this bud to create the helic pad, which you can see over here. So let me take another, to another Turner building. So this is a, one of the tallest building, uh, in, in, this is the tallest building in Taiwan. So in Taiwan, um, bamboo, is an integral part of their country. So the designers say the design is originated from bamboo. Now, this is a totally different concept from the previous buildings which I have explained. So here the designer has arranged a simple you know, geometric shapes into an interesting pattern. Uh, he has infused an unorthodox, you know, design element in a conventional shape. So I will take the, you know, photo courtesy for this building. So now let us move from a dreamy world of architectural design to a, you know, more dreary world of engineering where most of us belong. So curvature, especially multi-directional variation in the plane of facade, like the building which I have shown in the first three slides, those will be more challenging uh, to execute and even to design. So naturally inspired buildings uh, will be more challenging. 
conventional shapes will be much easier. So what parameters? So before talking about design parameters, the physical separation between conditioned internal and unconditioned external environment of a building. That is the general you know, definition of the facade. So a facade designer should consider all these parameters which you can see over here, like air pressure. These are the enemies for the facade, like air pressure, sound, daylight, and snow, heat flow, humidity, fire and contamination. So you sh designer should take care of all these Uh, Shiju, uh, what I suggest is if you can switch off your camera, we'll get better bandwidth and a full screen because we're having some uh, issue with your audio. Just switch off your camera. You can press the button over there. The button is on the screen. Yeah, you mean Under switch the, off the camera? Yeah, just switch off the camera. Right. This is perfect. Thanks. Right, you can okay. go ahead. Okay, so the designer use different so the signed for all the loads, as you know, the dead load, live load, things like that, the equipment load, like you know, facade cleaning equipment, weight load component, and uh, gravity gravity loads like you know, people, uh, snow, and the lateral loads like you know wind load, uh, lateral uh, seismic force, uh, thermal uh, forces like you know expansion and contraction. So these are the major items which will come. Then comes to uh, the weather control layer. One minute, let me just close the door. One minute. My wife also registered for this webinar and she is listening from the other room. So I'm a bit nervous. You understand, right? So the weather control layer, uh, the primary purpose of uh, weather control layer to manage the uh, rain. So like flashing, um, deep drip edges, uh, weep holes, or any horizontal in you know, a surface uh, should have something like you know two degree of slope so those details should be considered in the weather control layer then comes the air control layer so the primary purpose is to control the airflow so there should not be any airflow into the into the building from outside and uh, like we use membrane seal and gaskets to control this you know the thermal effect uh, air now comes to the therm thermal control layer. So the purpose of this primary purpose for the thermal control layer is to resist the thermal uh, transfer. So we should ensure that there is no gap in the insulation. Uh, we can use double or triple glazed uh, you know, facade. Uh, then uh, all other items like you know, rigid foam, thermal brake, uh, stone wool, all these comes into thermal control layer. So once the designer complete his design, the responsibility will shift to the side team. So side team like us, we should realize the dream of the designer and the builder by ensuring the safety, quality and cost parameters. So before starting the execution, um, we should do many pre-construction exercise. So in a PMC perspective, I will talk about the major pre-construction studies which we will be conducting. So one is like the cost confirmation. So we all know budget should be considered during the design stage itself. But however, in a serious, you know, a serious sort of uh, uh, budget comes only after uh, 
we get the financial proposal from the vendors. Then people will talk about value engineering. So in one of my project, you know, the internal uh, uh, metal panel like aluminum was changed to GA sheet. So something similar like that. So when you do some, uh, some value engineering options, make sure that the performance is not impacted. So you should do some changes uh, with, you can vary the specification without impacting much on the performance of the overall facade. Then the shop drawings, so a detailed shop drawing should be prepared um, about the system and you know by defining the grid, the extrusion material, the specification of all these materials should be mentioned in that uh, powder coating, you know, and, and at the end we should get approval from the consultant. Visual and performance mock-up is very important. A full-scale uh, mock-up representing uh, the actual product. When I say full-scale, it can be two, three panel. Uh, in what the same, same one is to one scale size that should be prepared for uh, visual inspection uh, and and the performance. The performance mock-up will be mostly visual mock-up can be done in the site and performance mock-up can be done either in the and laboratory and sometimes in the plant if uh, the vendor has got facility to do it. So test to be passed for water penetration, strength, air infiltration, and seismic performance, and uh, acoustic performance also can be tested. Now safety and constructability study is uh, very critical. So safety precautions for you know working at height, uh, working at edges, lifting, lowering, pushing, pulling, carrying or moving, all those things we should uh, consider. Uh, people should use uh, you know safety hardness because they will be working at the edges, slab edges. And a crane and a crane and hoist capacity should be decided. Sometimes this facade panel can be taken in the hoist in one of our project in uh, Thailand, we use we decided to use uh, hoist for transportation of the uh, you know unitized panels because uh, the, the slab cycle was just four to five days and uh, civil contractors said they won't be able to provide the you know crane for lifting of the facade elements so we decided okay let's take it through the uh, hoist and uh, the material hoist uh, we decided what should be the capacity of the material so hoist so that we can take the panels. So those things should be decided, I mean, not studied during the constructability stage and method statement for the installation uh, should be uh, checked and uh, it should be approved. Other one, other issue is interface with other disciplines. So Pasada has got, uh, you know, relationship with many other disciplines like, you know, BM, uh, for this BMU, like building maintenance units. Other than that, uh, all ME, MEPF uh, systems Facade lighting will have interaction with uh, electricity, you know, MEPO. Same, similarly, flooring interaction will be there. In one of the project uh, projects, we had only uh, 50 mm thickness for the finishing. So all the facade brackets, if it comes in that 50 mm, it will be projecting up. So we decided to resist that, uh, you know, the bracket system. So those kind of uh, decisions should be done earlier. There will be some other interface with, uh, you know, false ceiling that also should be considered. So BIM is a, you know, suitable tool for this. I believe there was some other session about facade and BIM conducted previously. So BIM is definitely will be useful. There will be some comeback activities uh, that is called out of sequence activities. So the one problem with um, uh, unitized facade is like, in case if you cannot install in one panel in a particular floor, all other panels above that that like that line should be you know kept it kept it for later date. So maybe there are options available now. Like in India, one word which I heard after coming to India is uh, you know we you have some kind of you know other ways to do it. Jugad. So some jugad may be there. I'm not very sure. But you know this come back normally as per my experience. In case if you cannot, like a crane bracing is going through one of the panel and uh, or there is a hoist running in that case, or you have some loading dock uh, or you want to keep some area, want some panel open for uh, some to take some MEP equipment in. All these cases, 
uh, you should uh, you should leave all the panel above that level also, all the panel from throughout from top to bottom that those are the you know the compact activities after completion or after executing that uh, interfere then you come back and you do this other thing is uh, quality control so probably a quality checklist can be prepared many of the pmcs already have it uh, many of uh, facade contractors also will have it so quality control manual what are the tests you will be doing after completion of the you know the work during the closeout stage all these things uh, and the inspection schedule all those things can be discussed during the uh, quality you know in the quality control so now let me take you to the field i hope that will be more interesting so this is the project which i mentioned previously so here uh, this this is a face here you know, i'm just showing uh, one flow you can see let me just show you how the yeah so this is how a unit uh, you define like a unitized panel when i say so one of the panels what you can see over here another panel like that so you create you you divide this entire facade into uh, different um, uh, sections like different elements so this is one unitized curtain wall element that will be fabricated in the factory and and then we come here and install it so you can see here when i say so in the same if you can see the cursor here um, this is a natural stone so natural stone the width is different in different panel in that case those are all become uni unique panels but it can be repeated this is it will come like a modular panel and it can be repeated in the upper levels so normally uh, a unitized panel will have a you know you can see here there will be a span rail on the top like this okay so there will be a span rail on the top so a span rail uh, with thermal insulation and that can be used for you know uh, for you know fire separation also so um, if you have a nice stone wool kept on that span rail it will be uh, helpful to you know stop spreading of fire and spread fire to the upper levels so that's one option for this and sometimes uh, the span rail there will be in most of the cases in the front of the span rail you can see uh, glass element in this particular project uh, we have aluminium i'll go into detail in the coming slide and secondly we have the glazing so the glazing part it is a you know can be a fixed glass or operable windows i'll talk about that in uh, about the uh, glass uh, assembly i will talk in coming slides so this uh, this is uh, an enlarged view of uh, this panel part i which i mentioned previously here you can see there is a stone cladding which will be fabricated from the factory with its uh, back support secondary support then you have aluminium uh, member here and its back support so here we have used 3mm aluminium with the you know, power powder coating as specified in the drawings so then uh, we have here uh, the stone wool inside and you can see the connection between uh, the facade and the slab edge there is a gap so there we should use a you know a flashing uh, that will stop any kind of uh, smoke spread uh, into the you know next level smoke is more dangerous than fire so that should be taken care of properly now let me take you to the next slide with about the glass so this uh, this slide um, this glass composition i have taken from one of our project in in far east uh, because the other project which i mentioned is in kazakhstan uh, in astana there the temperature is uh, you know temperature difference between internal and external environment is very high you know external temperature will go minus 35 degrees so here um, far east will be more or like india like almost the same kind of humidity and uh, you know, temperature considerations so i taken something from there so here you can see uh, in the external element there is there are two glass 
so with uh, a, you know a sandwich uh, pvb laminate so we have used 6 mm glass another 6 mm glass in between we have 1.5 2 mm pvb laminate it's a clear laminate if you need some different color that, that's also possible then 16 mm air gap and inside uh, 8 mm again uh, it's a high strength glass which is used so for the project uh, in in Astana, which I mentioned, there we need you know better you know, better control, better insulation. So what we did uh, there, we filled the gap, this air gap, we filled with uh, argon gas. So that will help a lot. So that's why, and in the internal glass element was uh, 12 mm thick. So now uh, there are some innovations uh, in in this uh, glass um, so i would like to just mention that there is something called smart glass available or dynamic glass it's an electri electronically tinted glass like if if you are you know coming to your home you want to sit in your uh, living room couch you want to see outside so you don't want to put a curtain but the sun is disturbing you so what you can do you can control the tint level of this uh, your glass uh, your facade glass by using your mobile application so that is a new innovation in, in the glass industry so now let me take the field about the installations so this is the first element you know this is the first activity of a facade contractor so here we have a relation like in the, it's an interaction between um, a structural slab and the facade element so this is the first connection element so the we will be installing this u channel i don't want to use any trade names here so we'll be installing a u channel so that is the connection between that is the connecting element all the load will be transferred from the facade to the structural slab edge using this u channel so u channel will be inserted into the you know uh, reinforcement cage so here there is a chance during the concrete pour and vibration the u, u channel can move that's a common problem which we are seeing in the industry so what you should do make sure you restrain that properly nowadays there are the, these uh, u channel suppliers are coming with some good options like some end plate and welded mesh and you can clamp this u channel to that so that's an option and uh you can see there is a t-bolt that's another connection element which will come later this t-bolt will be in you can see there is a lock here so this will be uh, inserted into this u-channel to connect the bracket so normally this u-channel uh, will be almost you know, 250 to 300 mm long around three inches deep into the concave so okay this photo uh, this is uh, done taken after uh, completing completing the concrete so you can see here in this u channel there is a filler element so this can be taken out later or so i will suggest in the past like shown in the previous slide we can have some kind of tape also so that all these uh, mortar or slurry will not go inside and get hardened otherwise it will be later difficult to open it up so the level of this um, this u channel should be the level of the slab or in case if predetermined uh, some resources there that is also possible but there is a probability you know this can go down and go up so rest, rest, you need to restrain it properly some cases if i go back to the previous slide again you have here on the side also there are some of the u channels you can see that's easy to install you can nail it to the um, side foam work now here this is the next activity so once you install the u channel so u channel uh, should be tested for its you know pull out strength or shear strength or chest strength all those things so these vendors has got equipment for doing that so you should um, do that and that should be done after concrete gets its um, strength anyway you will get that strength because facade activity will be done in a very related day so now connection you can see over here this um, um bracket is connected by using the t-bolt so this t-bolt 
above the tree bolt there should be minimum 1.5 to 2 pitch then only it will be strong there should be you know you should do the torque test for this so one important point i need to talk i let me again take you back to this uh, d bolt on the top you can see a notch this shows the direction of the t bolt so once you insert this t bolt into this channel this t bolt should be perpendicular to, perpendicular to the longitudinal direction of the channel then only it will be locked otherwise it won't be so now once you install the bracket you won't see uh, the connection between the t bolt and the u channel so that's why it is important to know the direction so that on the top of this bolt um, you can see this um, notch it will show the direction so in case if you think that okay it is not perpendicular to the longitudinal direction of this uh, uh, this uh, u channel you should open the assembly and do it again now um, about the fabrication i won't be talking much about the fabrications because most of the system components are uh, assembled in a plant you know or in the factory under controlled working conditions quality will be improved schedule can be predicted and uh, a rapid closure of the building without being affected by the weather condition is possible so so this is very good system that is the main beauty of uh, this um, unitized panel in if it is a stick system the major diff i mean the stick system is something like you know castings like a casting city con gate you do everything on the site and uh, unitized panel you can consider it's like a prefabricated or precast element so but you should uh, as a pmc material release fabrication and assembly all those things the time taken you know conveyance you know how you bring it to the site where will you store it all those items need to be studied well in advance so this is uh, the same project in astana so we have uh, this is one of the unitized panel unfortunately i don't have a photo with um, a glass window in here this is a louver so obviously this is for a mechanical flow you can see here there is a lot of um, there are a lot of uh, natural stone this a limestone came you know we procured it from germany and there is a, you can see there is a small hole on the top uh, that is for uh, facade lighting and the support uh, layer you can see below this uh, c channels and uh, the lifting hooks you can see this uh, gasket so all these uh, water penetration air entrainment all those things this uh, this will help so now let let me take you to the installation you can see so here uh, this panel is lifted by using the crane or you can use a winch also some cases uh, a monorail can be fixed or we can use bmus normally bmu come in a very later date so uh, you should use the crane or winch so here um, the facade element uh, is connected to our bracket properly and the next element so one only one uh, panel is connected here to the bracket and the second other side another panel also will be coming so it will lock properly so this photo shows uh, the ex exact you know connection between the two panels are showing here and uh, the gaskets uh, are all are visible here so and uh, these are the lifting hooks and you just see this uh, gap like i have mentioned in the previous uh, in during this uh, in the sketch of the span rail you can see a gap here later time you need to seal it by using uh, some you know a flashing here so now okay this is a photo from inside here all this assembly bracket assembly is covered so that debris will not get in and this is the flashing this should be sealed properly there should not be any gap into it now this one this is a facade is a for protection for the glass so normally the facade activity will follow the you know structural slab activity so facade work will be starting even while you know the structural slab pouring is going on on the top 
So, and there are a lot of interior work which will follow like MEP activities and uh, interior, uh, you know, interior partitions and all. So in, during that time, there is a chance this uh, glass can get damaged. So minor damage can be prevented by using this. This is spray applied, um, this spray uh, application. So it will form kind of a membrane that you can peel out during the finishing stage. This, this will give some protection to the glass. Especially when we deal with uh, different package contractors. So one or every package will think only about themselves. So they won't think about others, you know. So in that case, it's very critical to protect the facade work by facade contract. So here, this is showing uh, the progress. So the installation is not very labor intensive work. You can see here one crew, you know, one team is bringing the two of the two guys on the top. They are panel down and uh, there is another person standing the floor below and the installation bracket area i mean uh, installation area, another person on the lower floor so so it's like you know around uh, around six members or so six or eight member maximum they can install this um, these uh, panels it's very easy to install now i am coming to the final slides so only a couple of slides balance. Let's see, this is, um, these are some of the point um, you should remember. This is from our experience. So you should coordinate with crane bracing in advance. You can see you now the crane bracing for a unitized facade. It is always good to take the crane bracing through the glass element. Glass can be installed in a later date. If it is going through the mullion, it will be a problem unless if you have any uh, if you have any other guard in india which i don't know but normally uh, this is done like this so here you can see one of the cranes are you know being uh, dismantled so the openings you can see on the top the glass panels that will be a comeback activity like i mentioned previously so this is one item crane capacity again very important um, now for this project uh, some of the facade panels because the facade panel the height is uh, 4.5 meter and 1.5 meter width all this with all this uh, natural stone so here some of the corner panels i remember it was something like two tons so um and uh, the crane capacity at the uh, end of the boom should be sufficient to lift these panels otherwise you will end up bringing you know some other cranes it will be very expensive and the crane radius definitely should be checked. Uh, BMU socket, BMU restraint sockets are needed. So that need to be identified, the location, and that should be installed on the set. And waterproofing intersection is another critical area where every should, everybody should take care, like intersection at the roof level where the facade meets with the uh, roof. And uh, now there is a lot of podium, uh, you know, gardens and all. So those areas also make sure uh, proper overlapping detailing everything is done so and uh, weather sealant compatibility with uh, um, with the weather condition is important so when we take it for india indian conditions if it is mumbai condition take it uh, something which is good for mumbai and uh, you, yeah Shiju, sorry to interrupt We're running out of time if you can just speed this up it'll yeah, be just last, uh, coming to the last slide okay so the last one, uh, the most important, uh, again, a lot of, you know, MEP um, activities like welding will be happening inside the building. So there is a, and some metal cutting will happen so during the spark, spark. With the spark, the glass should not damage, so that protection also should be taken. So this is the last slide. Um, so in the closing out, you should do the necessary testing and uh, arrange all the product warranties. Most of the products are a system is where there will be a warranty of 10 years. Make sure you get it. Keep an attic stock, especially for you know, major elements like these uh, stones or anything like that. Later, you won't be able to source it. So try to keep sufficient attic stock. Compiled or, uh, or as build uh, information. So that's it. I hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, presentation. Now over to Ahmed. Um, I'll take some questions for uh, uh, Shiju. Um, right. Uh, Shiju, there's a question for you which asks, uh, 
do you see a greater role of digitization in facades planning and execution particularly for high rises get you can you tell me again uh, do you see a greater role of digitization in facades for planning and execution particularly in high rises the digitization yeah for planning yeah, and execution yeah definitely i think we should go for the latest uh, technologies available and uh, that will definitely improve uh, you know all the systems the processes everything so i think we should definitely go for it yes right um there's a question uh, somebody is asking uh one second this one is uh uh, uh, these are three points basically by one gentleman. Uh, facade uh, testing spray test, number one. Uh, glass mm -hmm. protection due to cement uh, slurry spray. And uh, waterproofing detail at podium and terrace. Okay. Glass testing with flood testing you're talking about first one. Spray testing, right. Facade testing, spray testing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, facade uh, leakage is a major problem, you know, everywhere, especially in places like Mumbai. So yeah, flood, there are some testing like host test we do, flood, flood testing we do. Uh, other than that, there are some other tests also, which I, I recommend like in European countries and all, uh, many of our international projects, there are some other testing which is available. One is uh, a thermal scanning method and another one is uh, electric uh, field vector mapping method. So these are like, you know, this kind of an electric, uh, electric conductivity through a you know a water medium it is based on that so those kind of uh, advanced technologies are available so i think uh, we should always uh, think about that now regarding waterproofing uh, see always there is a, um, there are two couple of things which i would like to talk about waterproofing one major problem in waterproofing uh, you know one, one one major issue which we are observing is lack of detailing so detailing should be done, especially uh, the horizontal waterproofing, which is the roof waterproofing and its connection with the facade waterproofing. These are most of the cases, these are two different materials. So material compatibility is a key thing over here because if, from the facade, most of the case, it is an APDM membrane, which is coming. And from the, uh, you know, from the roof, it may be a spray applied, applied two component or three component kind of mix application which is coming over here or it can be a self adhesive membrane so it's compatibility these are you know the weak weak points uh, another issue is like you know people you know going for something like um, cheap materials you know though that that is another case so that should be avoided go for you know something good materials and all the testing should be conducted you know especially what happened in facade direction the supervision uh, gets, you know, it is it is less, I should say. What happened, because this is on the edge or on the periphery, the safety is a major concern. So many people don't want to go over there to inspect it properly. So that lack of inspection is one, one reason why there are a uh, lot of issues uh, related to you know, facade leakages. Okay. Um, right. Uh, John, are you there? I can take a question for you now. Yeah, John, are you there? Okay, uh, I think uh, he's okay. I'll take another question for you, Shiju. Uh, what are the yeah. options to reduce uh, condensation in facade glass? See, um, I should, I would like to say it in a different way. You know, condensation is actually showing like your window or your facade is doing a good job. Condens condensation is happening mainly because of, you know, the uh, difference in temperature between external and internal uh, environment. So when there is a condensation, it shows that, okay, your, your uh, system is working good. And that is because of the humidity level. So the condensation uh, to reduce uh, the low, low E level glasses can be utilized, used. That will help a lot. But you know, the, I, I should say that, you know, in case if it is a cold weather condition area, there are options like, you know, snow removal and all. There are heating options are available but now our our conditions it is uh, common i think it is okay uh, but low e uh, glasses can be utilized but it is definitely showing that your facade is doing a good job uh, related to the thermal conductivity so uh, should you for you a question uh, 
uh, what is the distance between the external face of glass to RCC structure face? Okay, uh, so in our case, we had around 300 millimeters. Okay, you had 300 millimeters. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So in, in a couple of projects which I did, we had around 300 millimeters from the uh, external to inside. I'm, I'm not talking, I'm talking about the very external edge of the facade, you know. So uh, that gap was much less. If you are talking about the internal face of the facade and the slab edge, that is something like, I think, uh, or hardly 100 millimeter. So that need to be, uh, normally we can fill it. There will be a flashing for smoke. And additionally, there will be some kind of filling. Here in India, may people uh, normally go for vermicular concrete, I believe. So the budget which I found is outside India. So what we use there, uh, we use stone wool. So around uh, 100, 100 uh, mm thick stone wool, uh, around uh, 80 kg per meter cube density. That will give very good, uh, you know, fire resistance. So for some time, now, I mean, for the most of the building, uh, fire resistance, like it's all for people safety. It is not for the building safety. It's for people safety. It is not like damage can happen for the building, but people should be evacuated fast. So like, you know, it can give you like almost one hour fire rating so that people can evacuate fast. So okay, there's one question here for Shiju. How much productivity to be considered for installation of unitized panel for high-rise building in schedule? What are the latest equipments available other than tower crane or hoist to expedite work and increase productivity? See, uh, when it comes to productivity, uh, it all depends on uh, where you build it and what kind of facade panel, like uh, what is the size of the facade panel, uh, what is the weight of the facade panel. So it's a lot of criteria in that. In some cases, uh, the building uh, shape will be different. There will be twisted, there may be twisted frames also may be needed. So this is a general statement, but when I talk about this uh, particular building, which I did, so we had almost 5,500 uh, unitized panels on that. Um, and uh, the product we, we received like, you know, we were, we were doing like, there were two towers and two, two tower cranes. So we were do using, uh, we were getting like 30 panels in a day. So we did that. Uh, we started somewhere in, uh, I think in March and we finished in October. Then they're building up just the installation, not the go, bow, go back work, uh, not the seed and filling and all that all took time. So just the erection part of it. So if you take uh, the crew member, the when you say work, I mean productivity, you should not the crew member. So we had something erectors around, around 30 people and 30 panel uh, in a day. So uh, it's like, you know, one director, one panel in a day probably. But you know, there are some projects like I was uh, reading through some, uh, what have, what what was the productivity achieved in project like Butch Khalifa. Uh, I saw that, you know, when they started, they had something like uh, 40 panels they installed in a day later, it became 175 panels uh, in, a, in, a, in a day. So that is the, you know, main, uh, I mean, that's a major building which we know where the productivity uh, reached in you know, a very, very high level. Uh, re regarding um, equipment, uh, there are some people, you know, they use monorail on the top. You can use monorail only for the installation of the facade. And uh, for, for the facade, if you don't want to depend on the crane, so one of our projects, what we did, we have some, we don't want to depend on these. Uh, uh, you know, these major tower cranes. So we use some smaller cranes, which is available. And uh, that is like a, like a spider crane kind of thing that can be put in. Uh, and there are some smaller other small crane uh, available, which you can take it through even hoist. And uh, you can uh, insta utilize, you can bring it to any floor and start installing it. Electrically operated winches, uh, that's another option available. So electrical operator we just you can utilize uh, for you know insulation of this facade right so i think we'll end here we are already over time today so thank you gentlemen uh, for uh, your time thank you mr Kiju. thank you mr john for